Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Tuesday, June 21st. This is Gina McGuire. Over the next few days, we'll continue to see increases in fire potential, first with the record temperatures over the southern half of Nevada and Utah today. And we will see a slight decline of temperatures over the next couple of days, but we will still continue to see temperatures well above normal in these areas. Elsewhere across the basin, above normal temperatures will continue through Wednesday and Thursday before decreasing. We'll also see a return of thunderstorms over the eastern half of Utah over the next two days. These storms will be a mix of wet and dry and mainly tied to the higher terrain. However, fuels are critical, especially after the recent heat, so we will be watching for new starts in these areas. As we move into Wednesday and Thursday, a stronger area of low pressure will move into the northern portion of the Great Basin, really cooling temperatures across Idaho. However, winds will be increasing along the Sierra front tomorrow and increasing further on Thursday over the northern half of Nevada. This will again be monitored as relative humidity will still remain very low. Over the last 24 hours we've seen no showers or thunderstorms across the Great Basin. In fire activity we've seen some small fires pop up along the periphery of the Great Basin but these fires have remained small. Over the last seven days any precipitation has really been focused over the central Idaho mountains Anything further south has been relatively spotty with thunderstorms and is well below normal for this time of year. If we look at our current ERCs, we've seen definitely an increase in ERCs across the area with the hot and dry weather we've been seeing, and now much of the southern half of Utah is seeing ERCs above the 70th percentile. Even further north, we're starting to see those ERCs increase to closer to the 70th percentile in parts of Nevada and Idaho. Looking at live fuel moisture, Live fuel moisture has been decreasing and in some areas very rapidly with the hot temperatures. The water vapor satellite loop from this morning shows this very strong ridge of high pressure in the Four Corners area, which is responsible for our very hot conditions across the Great Basin and the record heat in the southern areas. We'll also see some of this moisture from the southwest creep a little bit further north into Utah over the next couple of days, and this will bring us isolated thunderstorms to mainly the eastern half of Utah. Today a weak area of low pressure is moving into central Idaho. This will only provide a slight increase in winds, however dry conditions are expected. The next stronger area of low pressure off the Canadian coast will drop southeast and this will impact the Great Basin Wednesday and Thursday into Friday, bringing stronger winds to the northern half of the basin and much cooler temperatures and some showers and thunderstorms to Idaho. Today's significant fire potential will be elevated over the southern half of the Great Basin with the record heat and very dry conditions, and also with the return of lightning over parts of southeast Utah. However, the greater coverage of lightning will likely remain further south into Arizona and east into Colorado today. Looking at the temperatures, we will continue to see again that record heat over southern areas with a high of 113 in Las Vegas and well over 100 degrees in southern Utah. Any showers or thunderstorms today will likely be confined to eastern Utah. Anything further west will mainly be cumulus buildups over the higher terrain. Moving on into Wednesday, this area of high pressure moves slightly east as the stronger low pressure off the west coast starts to drop southeast. So temperatures may decrease a couple of degrees but will still remain well above normal in all areas, along with dry conditions, keeping low to moderate fire potential. Any thunderstorms we see on Wednesday will likely be across the central Utah mountains and over parts of eastern Utah, these thunderstorms will again be a mix of wet and dry, and we will be watching for any drier thunderstorms after the record heat to increase fire potential. Again, temperatures will be slightly cooler, but only by a few degrees. By Thursday, we'll see a stronger area of low pressure drop into the northwest, and this will allow for much cooler temperatures eventually across Idaho, but will also bring an increase in winds. Winds will start increasing along the Sierra front on Wednesday, but will increase further on Thursday over the northern half of Nevada with low relative humidity, which may increase fire potential. Relative humidity will remain in the single digits on Thursday, again with wind gusts over 30 or 35 miles per hour likely over much of the northern half and western half of Nevada on Thursday, so we may see some critical fire weather conditions. Overall amount of precipitation over the next three days will likely be limited to the higher terrain of Utah with those thunderstorms and will still likely be pretty spotty and on the lighter side. Now moving towards Friday and through the weekend, this strong area of low pressure moves across central Idaho on Friday and this will significantly drop temperatures over the northern portion of the Great Basin with highs over the southern areas of Idaho and the lower elevations only reaching the low to mid 70s which is below normal. We also may see showers and thunderstorms increase with this low across central Idaho. However, further south will keep breezy conditions and temperatures will decrease to near normal over parts of northern Nevada and northern Utah, but will still remain above normal in the south with low to moderate fire potential. As we move through Saturday and Sunday, the ridge of high pressure starts to rebuild across the area. Therefore, we'll see a return of warming temperatures through the weekend and next week, along with very dry conditions in all areas. 
Therefore, any precip we see over the next few days will likely be again with those thunderstorms and then with any of that precipitation on Friday as the low moves across central Idaho. As we move into the later portion of June, early July, we'll likely continue to see these very warm and dry conditions for the northern portion of the Great Basin with possibly an increase in moisture in the Four Corners area over eastern Utah. That concludes our briefing for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you for listening.